Right, let's turn our Bibles to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 66, last verse in the book of Isaiah. Isaiah 66, 24. Isaiah 66, verse 24. The title message is, I can't go to hell. I can't go to hell. Isaiah 66, 24. The Bible says, And they shall go forth and look upon the carcasses of the man that have transgressed against me. For their worm shall not die, neither shall their fire be quenched, and they shall be an abhorring unto all flesh. Brother Jay, can you please pray for the message? Lord, yes, Father, we thank you, first of all, for saving us from hell by the precious blood of Jesus Christ, which was shall on Hell's cross. Thank you for the indwelling Holy Spirit. Thank you for eternal security. Thank you for the King James Bible and our local Bible in the church where we still have the liberty and the freedom to congregate together, to worship you, listen to your word, Lord God. We ask you that you fill within your preacher the Holy Spirit, give him the unction and the power and authority to preach the whole counsel of God unto us and open our hearts, minds, and ears to your word. Help us not to think about what's happening outside of this um, auditorium, but help us to just wholly give ourselves unto your word. Help us not to drop any single word that we hear, but hide those words in our hearts so that we will not sin against you. Be with those who are uh, listening uh, online, pray that you'll be with them. And just bless them, Lord God. But most important, Lord, pray for your soon return to call of Jesus. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 The verse that we looked at is the main verse that Jesus Christ quoted in New Testament more than any of verses. So think about that. You know, Jesus Christ came down to save sinners. Jesus Christ did many, many miraculous and wonderful things. But our Lord and Savior quoted Isaiah 66, verse 24, the most in his ministry. Why is that? Because he preached about hell eight times in three and a half years of his ministry. He came to save you and me from a place called hell. It's not an imaginary place. It's a real place where people will burn forever and ever. Hell's made for devil and his angels. So think about the pain and the torture, suffering that you're going to go through throughout first thousand years, 10,000 years, 100,000 years, million years, billion years, trillion years, for all eternity. We talk about hell. We talk about people going to hell because the Bible talks about people going to hell. People always have a wrong idea that Bible-believing preachers get, a, get enjoyment and joy out of telling people that they're going to hell. We never do. No. We don't want people to burn in hell. Amen. I mean, Jesus Christ died for not just you know, certain sinners. He died for every sinner. And... If you don't think about hell as a Bible believer either, then you're missing the point. I mean, if Jesus Christ talked about this verse the most, then you should be talking about this verse the most. You know why this verse is so important? Because every new translation, every new Bible omitted verses that Jesus Christ quoted, like Mark chapter 9, verse 46 and 48. It's not there. And then... Jesus Christ actually quoted it from Isaiah 66, 24. Why? Because people don't want to believe in hell. People don't want to be preached about hell. People don't want to think about themselves burning in hell. Yeah. They're scared. Bible correctors, religious leaders, all the humanists and liberals out there, even the so-called you know, Baptist, Presbyterian, all the so-called people who said, I'm a Christian, if you can't talk about hell, not because of enjoyment, but because you love lost souls out there, because Lord talked about it a lot, 
then something's wrong with you. Yes. If you come through the door, if you go out and talk to people that, are you sure you're not going to burn in hell, right? You're on your way to hell. I mean, if you can't say those things, why are you here for? Just be with Joe Austin's of the world. Right. Love, 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 love. You're the best. God loves you, right? Hell is just a grave. Hell is just a, you know, imagination. It's not. It's a real, real place. Yes. I titled that I can't go to hell because, you know, following up on last week's preaching, if you're really born again, you and I can't go to hell. Amen. And that's the greatest blessing. Thank you, Lord. You know, it's always uh, kind of comical, but it's sad. You know, when we're doing street preaching, there's always someone who's offended, and they come to us, say, you're the one who's going to burn in hell. They see our sign, the wicked shall be turned into hell. And all the nations that forget God, we have our, you know, yellow, bright signs where people can see, you know, people thrown to hell. And their verse is about hell. Yeah. And they say, why you have that? That's too offensive. You're going to go to hell. And my answer is, I just tell them, I can't. Amen. I can't anymore. Even if I wanted to burn in hell, I can't. Amen. Because I trusted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. That's it. That's why, unless you have that assurance of salvation, unless you have that conviction, then you won't be able to answer like that. Right. Right? Then the question for you is, if someone were to tell you, you are the one who's going to burn in hell, what are you going to say? Mm. Are you going to be like, oh, you got me there. <laughs> uh, that's, a, that's not a good Bible-believing way, right? Amen. Admitting and to a lot of times unsaved sinners or liberal Christians Right. who doesn't care about lost souls out there. They just want to increase the numbers in the church, bring people to church, play devil's music, and say it's all good, right. you know, praising God. It's not. I mean, devil was a cherub that, that was over the throne of God. Yes. He was the leader of the music. Yes. And millions of souls are going to burn in hell because of music. Yes. A lot of so-called Christians go to church because of music, right. contemporary Christian music, no different than, you know, devil's music out there, hip-hop right. Christian music, right. rock and roll Christian music. Yeah. I mean, what is that, right. right? I mean, God will not get glory out of it, no. and you yourself, your flesh will be so happy, you're full of pleasure that you think that after all the service is gone, like a concert-like setting, you're waving your hand for 45 minutes to an hour, you jump up and down, you repeat after each same song. It's like, a, I don't know. I, remember, I still remember it still rings on my head, you know. Lord, I like lift your name on high, and then you just go over and over and over and over. And then now you don't even know where you are at. No. You know, you're so delirious. And then someone says, let's repeat this prayer. And then you pray, and then you think you're saved. Right. Man, majority of the people, when we talk to those people, because don't say we don't know, because we witness to people and we know. They don't know if they're saved or not. They don't know where they're going. They don't know if they're born again or not. No. All they did was a repeat after a prayer. Emotionally driven, feeling driven, right. not because of the word of God. If you are in that state, then your answer is, I can go to hell. Yeah. You definitely can. Amen. Because your testimony tells you that, right? Yes. Ultimately, I don't know. Ultimately, nobody knows except you and the Lord. Right. But it's like this. Husband, sometimes wife will tell you, do you love me? Right? Now you say, I love you. They know whether it's true or not. Right? right? Same thing. Husbands, you ask your wives, do you love me? They say, I do. But you know it's true or not, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Salvation is more important. Yes. Are you sure? Do you know you're saved or not? Amen. If you can't answer, then what's wrong with you? Right? right? Yeah. Do you tell that to your wife and your husband? I think I love you. <laughs> you think that's going to you know, end up well at your dinner table tonight? Right? You know, honey, I think I love you. I mean, then I think doesn't work anymore. Exactly. It's either yes or no. Are you 100% sure? 
for me, my testimony, not because you know, I'm better than you, not because of anything that I've done, because what Lord has done, I can tell you, thousand percent confident because Bible is my, you know, evidence. Yeah. Bible is my certification Amen. because Bible is the proof yeah. that I can't go to hell. Amen. Even if I wanted to, once saved, always saved. That's it. And don't give me this, you know, baloney that, you know, certain places in the Bible, yeah, study the word of God. If you did study the word of God, you do know that certain places of the Bible, you can't get saved just by trusting Jesus Christ alone. He wasn't even there in the Old Testament. He was the angel of the light. And some people who says, yeah, Old Testament people accepted Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Where? I mean, you guys all make up stuff. You hear made up stories. And then you start believing the fairy tales. And then you think you're saved. Very dangerous. If you truly, truly believe the word of God, all you had to do was trust him as your Lord and Savior. Plus nothing. Right? With repenting heart. Knowing that you are a sinner on your way to hell, turn from your ways and turn to the Lord and then receive him as your Lord and Savior in your heart. Then you're saved. What more is required when the Bible says, for by grace are ye saved through faith and then not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. That's it. No works involved at all. That's why I can't confidently tell you that I can't go to hell because... No works have been involved in my life. No baptism stuff, right? No water baptism. As I mentioned last week, I'm mentioning it again because people always mention it. Water baptism is not going to save you from hell. It's just an act. It's ordinance. It's telling people that I'm saved because I trusted Christ as my Lord and Savior. I was dead, buried, and rose again with him. It's just an act. But if you trust your water baptism to go to heaven, you're going to burn in hell. Yes. You have to tell yourself, I can go to hell. Because you are trusting water baptism or any other things, right? If you're trusting church attendance, if you're trusting good works, if you're trusting feelings, speaking in tongues, yeah. seeing Jesus in your dreams or God or Paul, or Peter, anybody that you call a saint, then you're going to trust wrong things and burn in hell. That's why those people, if you were to truly ask them, are you 100% sure that you go to heaven? They're not sure. Can you say, I can go to hell, or I can't go to hell? They They might lie to me, they might lie to you, but deep inside... Their heart goes, I can go to hell. If anyone's sitting here in this congregation or anyone listening, you know, through online, then what is your testimony, right? Yeah. Are you like, I can't go to hell? Or are you like, I can go to hell? It was like this, you know, before I knew the right doctrine, you blow yourself and you die. Suicide means you're going to go to hell no matter what. And some people tell you some, you know, wicked stuff and confuse people. Not telling that anyone should do it, right? Right. But even if you were to commit that tragedy, tragic thing, you will still go to heaven if you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Before I go into more description of hell as Bible believers and as unsaved people, both parties need to know. You know, we have this election coming up. They all say, oh, you need to know the, you know, issues from the both parties to really choose the right, you know, party, which makes sense, right? You can't be just screaming from one side, and you can't be just screaming from the other side. You know, as a, you know, logical, intelligent person that everyone should be, you should just study and make sure that you make the choice based on, you know, what you've learned. Same thing. You know, when it comes to your salvation, you have to make sure. You're not saved because someone told you you're saved, right? right? And you're not, not saved because someone says you're not saved. Your, your conviction, 
your belief and your faith, because the Bible says faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God, should come from the word of God. Right. Yeah. That's it. That's why when the first words that comes out of your mouth, when someone were to ask you, are you going to hell? Uh, let me think, you know, uh, let me think about my experience. And say, no, you have an issue. I'm not going to hell because I trusted Jesus Christ. And the Bible says so. That's why it is very important as with this season coming and this holiday season coming when they're going to commercialize everything about Lord Jesus Christ right. for the benefit of dollars. Yeah. But you and I as a Christian, we'll have opportunity, oh, yeah. more opportunity, you know, I mean, you know, forget about doctrinal stuff. We know he wasn't born on December 25th. Right. We know he's related to, you know, this sun God worshiping and everything. Yeah. But there is going to be an opportunity yeah. to witness more to the lost souls out there. Yeah. I mean, they'll be receiving tracks left and right. I mean, yeah. if I remember every single year, Woo! they think it's like a coupon, you know. <laughs> they think it's like, a, you know, like a more freebie coupon to get it from some department store or stores out there. And they accept it. You know, we have that greatest story ever told. Yes. Yeah, give it to them. I mean, I mean you tell them. You know, you know, the, and a lot of people say, I, I go to church. I, I believe in Jesus, right? right? And you know what Jesus Christ quoted the most from the Old Testament? Isaiah 66, 24. How about people going to hell? Are you going to hell? Are you, I can't go to hell or you can't go to hell? And they don't talk to him. They might be offended. But if people who are seeking the truth, they won't be. They, you're going to meet one out of 50, one out of 100 person who's been waiting for that truth. You know, we do this ministry not for the majority of people out there. Obviously, we want to you know, witness to every single person. But there's always that one person waiting to hear. Look around and think about the ministry of 27, 28 years here. You know, Pastor Kim, you know, throughout the ministry, I mean, like majority of the Korean communities, like all know now. It's new. It was new back in 97. Not anymore. They're all copying, you know, all the tracks and everything. But how many people are actually following the faith? You see by the numbers. You see by the numbers. Very few. Very, very minimal. You know why? Because people love pleasure more than serving God. Yeah. People love flesh more than serving God. Because people don't care about other people burning in hell. Yeah, that's why. Right? But that's been the historical trend. So don't think that, oh, why now? No. But especially if you have studied the word of God, Laodicean age, it's just apostasy. You know, people just turning away from their, you know, f faith over and over and over. Yeah. So it's what's expected. But why is it that you as a so-called Bible-believing Christian demonstrate exact same characteristic like those backslidden, unsaved churchgoers out there? Yeah. Why? You don't take it seriously enough. Right. You're like, you know, I can't go to hell, okay? Then show something. Seriously, right? As a Bible-believing Christian, yes. you're not dedicated to the Word of God. You don't pray every day. Church ministry is just a chump change for you guys, right. right? I go when I want to. That's it. It's like, you know, it's like a military service, but not military. You know, because you are a soldier of Jesus Christ. Once you accept Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, you've been enlisted in the army of God. Amen. Right? Can you imagine you go to a military, Marines, sir, not today. No. I'm just going to lie down on my bed, and I'm just going to enjoy myself playing with my phone. Like, oh, yeah, Sunday is nothing. You know, you know what, today I feel like going to, you know, somewhere else than church. Mm -hmm. You know, assembling together is a command yeah. from the word of God. Amen. Like, nah, 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 you know, it's all right. I mean, you're ashamed to people, online listeners, who doesn't have local churches to go to. If they had a local church, they'll be going there every single day, literally. I mean, I heard some, you know, I, I receive email, I receive, you know, mails and stuff. They want to hear more truth all the time. Amen. They yearn for fellowship. They want to have a Bible study all the time together. But, you know, that's why always the haves 
are the most unthankful people. Yes. Have nots are the one who always yearns and desires. You know, in America, you know, we're just country full of haves, right? Yes. So if anything else comes between you and your pleasure, that's always number one. It's not about Lord Jesus Christ. It's not about serving the Lord, right? I mean, when was the last time you shouted to the people, I can't go to hell because I trusted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? No, you're on your butt all the time on your couch or your bed, wherever you want to be, playing with your phone, watching TV, eating some bad food, you know, yes. just enjoying your daily life. Okay, you know, let's go to church. You know, it's been a, it's been a while, so I, I need to show my face, right? I always tell you, People always get offended. I don't care. Our church is different. It's about you and the Lord. If Pastor Kim care about just numbers, he's a brilliant guy. Not just because, you know, he's been in the ministry. I mean, he he was widely successful in other areas of his life before he got saved. He could have raised our numbers. We'll be that, you know, church down there, you know, with tens of thousands of people, yeah. you know, because formula is simple, right. right? Love message, love message, worldly music, yeah. and no dress code, yeah. That's it. no standard. Yeah. And then our church will be standing room only, right? Yes. But full of carnal, backslidden, dead Christians, Amen. right? So you have to take it seriously. You think when Jesus Christ preached about hell, this unsavory subject, he did it just for the heck of it? No. I guarantee you he was most dead serious about it. That's why he came down to save sinners, to the will of the Father, right? To do the will of the Father, right? But you yourself, you know, have to understand and realize this. This is not a game. It's not a game where, you know, oh, this is, again, that's why there's freedom. That's why you have a free will, you know. I never force you to come to our church. Neither does Pastor Kim, neither did Pastor Cronin. It's out of your free will. It's just that you, as a Christian, have to make the right choices. You have a free will to make all the wrong choices in the world. You know, I'm not going to stop you from doing that. I mean, Lord... We'll, you know, use this preaching and Bible study to wake you up, right? But I can't hold your hand, right? That's how church is different. You know, a lot of people who's like, oh, how come my pastor doesn't call me? I miss on purpose. I didn't want to go to church. I just want to see. Because every other church I went to, this guy will actually come to me, you know, and then do that, right? What is this? Is this like a vanity club? where you pay a membership to the church which you think is tithing, don't give tithe if you think it's a membership to church. Right. You're giving it to the Lord. It's offering, yes. right? So don't do it. God loves cheerful giver. Yes. You know, he's not gonna give, your, your, your money is not going to be blessed. And you always have to remember, God gives and he takes it away. Amen. It's not you. It's God's blessing. And then you're like, oh, you know, this guy never comes up and talks to me and blah, blah, blah. Why do you come to church? That is the real question I always want to ask. Because all the secular churches out there, worldly churches out there, they just want to, you know, be so close. They want to make sure that they feel belong. Not that I'm always for hospitality, right? We are always need to be hospital, hospitable to our brothers and sisters, especially who people who visit, right, and stuff. But you can't be on that, in that mindset I'm so special, and if he don't talk to me, I'm not going to that church. Good. Don't come, please, right? You're the type of person who's going to split the church half wide all the time because you're going to start finding a group and tell other people, yeah, you know, that that, that person don't care about us, you know, you know, like blah, blah, blah. That's all your carnal, fleshly desires. Then I have a solution for you. There's Joe Austin out there, you know. There's, gonna, there's, you know, there's Calvary Chapels out there. Oh, thank yeah, you. yeah, go over there. You're going to feel like you belong. You know, they're going to have their, you know, 
like a home worship leaders, you know, cafe leaders, right? You know, church has a cafe, TV, football, NFL club, NBA club. You know, during the service, you guys are there. You just have a monitor there and then talk about all this worldly stuff, like a political club there, you know, just do it. You know, this is not a church, especially church that bought with the blood of Jesus Christ. It's not a vanity club. Yeah. I mean, you're here, I'm here because I want to get closer to the Lord. I want to be changed. I want to get preached upon so that my life will be cleaner, holier. You know, I want to learn more about the Word of God. So if your purpose is just to be there, to be there, or, you know, there's always like a church hoppers out there. Unfortunately, we don't have too many Bible-believing churches, right? Don't think, that. Oh, I'm going to this Baptist church, so it's fine. Is the doctrine correct, right? Mm-hmm. Is the music correct, right? I mean, it's everything like a line, right? right yeah. Oh, you know, they use King James Bible, but all they, they have a contemporary Christian music. They do rock and roll, yeah. you know. They dress like the, the Venice Beach out there, yeah. you know. They're like, oh, it's fine. You know, it's not fine, Amen. right? They're making... You know, farce out of the word of God and Lord Jesus Christ. So you have to make a decision, right? Mm-hmm. You got to be more, how should I say, have some backbones. The Bible says, quit you like man. Amen. You have to like make a decision like, you know what? I've been playing around. I mean, when all this world's going straight down to hell, what have I been doing? Mm-hmm. I don't know. Have I been a good testimony and witness to this lost world out there so that at least I could lead even a one soul to the Lord? Or have I been just playing games, right? right. I don't know. What do you think is going to happen? <coughs> Someone who just got to save, they love the Lord, they love the Word of God, they love the pastors and pastor's wives and the ministry, and they just, without any pride, but with humility, just knowing they're less than nothing, sinners saved by grace, just continue being faithful and growing. Then someone who's like lack of days ago, church hopping here and there, just pleasing their flesh. What do you think is going to happen? Yeah. This person's going to be growing, maturing as a Christian. Other person, you know, they have that little bit of good, you know, food. Right doctrine here and there, but they'll never grow. Mm-hmm. It's like eating one good food and eating four or five bad food. Mm-hmm. What do you think is going to happen to your body? You'll never grow, right. right? Can you imagine when you have a little kid, a little baby, you feed him good food Monday and rest of the days, they get bad food. They're going to get sick. Right. Yep. That's why you Christians are sick. Yes. You're full of your own spiritual illness. That's why things of God does not bring you joy. That's why word of God does not give you happiness. That's why preaching is not real to you. Everything that you're hearing from me is just like a blah, blah, blah to you. I'm sorry that you're in that state. But only you can get yourself out of it by trusting Jesus Christ. Only you can get yourself out of it by getting right with the Lord. That's it. That's why 1 John 1, 9 is there for Christians like you and me. If we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I'm going to go to folks. I mean, it's encouraging words, right? It's not all negativity. But think about this. Dwight L. Moody, if you're saved and you know that you can't go to hell, Dwight L. Moody said, we are nearer heaven tonight than we have ever been before in our lives. Opposite spectrum of hell is heaven. Right? I mean, aren't you so happy? Can't wait Amen. to go to heaven, right? I mean, it's eternal. It's home of God, right? I mean, streets are pure gold, you know, full of precious stones. I mean, think about the characteristics. It's a high place. There's no more death, tear, sorrow, crying, or pain. You have perfect body, right? Woo! No more curse, Amen. right? 
You have your own mansions. No more hunger, thirst. No more excessive heat or excessive cold. Right? There's no devil. There's no sin. I mean, you're going to be with God the Father, God the Son, and the Holy Spirit. You're going to have angels. You're going to have cherubims. You're going to have seraphims. You're going to see all the Old Testament saints, New Testament saints, and you're going to see saved Christians. I mean, that's heaven waiting for you and me. I mean, if that doesn't bring a smile to your face, you're a miserable Christian, right? (laughs) I don't care if you think I have a bad smile. It's okay. You know, in the sight of the Lord, you're you're precious, right? I mean, people love. Uh, Would you rather be with someone who has a genuine joy and happiness and smile on their face, or would you be with someone who's like all grumpy, all downtrodden, right? I mean, that's why you and I can still have that joy and happiness, because if you trusted Jesus Christ, you and I can't go to hell. Then where are we going to go, right? Have you thought about that on a daily basis? Since I can't go to hell, then I'm going to heaven, right? Then you got to do something, right? Are you going to show up in heaven, you know, with nothing to show for? I mean, that's why there's judgments that are Christ, right? I can't go to hell, which means I'm going to heaven. But the Bible says, 2 Corinthians chapter 5, there's got to be judgment instead of Christ. So what am I doing, right? i got to do something for the Lord. Because everything that you've ever done for the Lord after you've gotten saved will be judged yeah. by the Lord Jesus Christ. Think about it. If you are saved, if you do know when you, are, you got saved, every single second, every single millisecond, every single day, every single month, every single year, since the day you've gotten saved, you'll be judged, whether it's good or bad. Yes. Everything. And imagine if you live a backslidden, you know, pleasure-living life, and you just threw away many, many of those months and years. Yeah. First of all, it's going to burn up, just like, you know, Pastor said, root hate stubble. But you've got to be accountable for it. You reap what you sow, Galatians 6, 7, correct? Yes. Then why are you not getting right with the Lord? Would you rather be judged by the Lord at the judgment seat of Christ? Or would you rather want to solve it right now? No. I mean, don't you want to? You are going to be in front of an almighty God. Think about it. The creator of the universe. It's not, it's not like you're going to be in front of a president of the United States. These days, it's a joke, right? But you're going to be in front of an almighty God himself, yes. ruler of the universe, and you're playing games with him. At least you're listening here or through online. At least you and I have some chance. Yes. Then you have to you know, use that advantage the fact that Lord is giving you and I more chance to get right, yes. then you have to get right. Amen. Why would you always throw these chances away? You know, the saddest thing that parents can feel is that when they give all the opportunity to their children to succeed, but because of their prodigal ways, yeah. because of their wasteful ways, because of their sin-loving ways, and they just kick it away, reject it they wind up doing nothing. As a parent, you, I'm ultimately it's their decision. They're a adult. But as a parent, your heart's going to break. Amen. Don't you ever think about how much, you know, how many times you've broken the Lord's heart? Yeah. Right? I know, no, no. He's got more people. Lord's omniscient, omnipresent, you know, omniscient. All-powerful, all-knowing, everywhere. Amen. He knows every single person. He can count every single person's hair and everything else. Yes. Right? You think that Lord's just going to be like, okay, you know, this person don't care, and then just hop on to the next person? That's not my God. I don't know which God you trusted. My God knows every single person, every single being, cares about every single person, and he will judge every single person yes. fairly. Yes. 
and you're like, oh, you know, there's other people. You're a fool. Uh-huh. Yeah. yeah. You know, you're a fool who's going to face the judge at the judgment seat of Christ. You know, what are you going to do at that time? You can't go back. Too late, right? I mean, people who reject Christ, they'll burn in hell. And at that white throne judgment, it's too late. That's going to be the common theme for them. Too late, too late, too late. But for Christians, at the judgment seat of Christ, our judgment is going to be too late, too late, too late, like too late. Well, yeah, back in the day, you know, November 3rd, 2024, Lord placed this video of your life in front of millions, if not billions, of Christians up in the air. You know, you were convicted. Holy Spirit convicted you to get right and to serve me instead of serving the flesh, the world, and the devil. But you rejected. And this is how you turned up. This is how you turned out. This is how you ended up. Wow, I, I don't even know. That's why knowing, Bible says, you know, terrible. Terrible. It's scary. Yes. Hell scary. Yeah. Judgment said Christ will be scary too. Yes. Uh-huh. I mean, so why do you play games? All right. You know, when you tell children, that's like first thing you tell Stop playing games with, games with me, son. Stop playing games with me, daughter, right? Because people always like to find excuses, justify their actions, and try to slit her like a snake way out of it. You, know, you got to get rid of that mindset. Man. Yeah. You got to consider your old man dead. Yes. Just crucify yes. with the Lord on the cross once and for all. You have a new man. Right? Amen. If you don't even know what that means, you need to study. Yes. You are getting probably the most precious teachings ever in the history of humankind. Amen. Yeah. Because the Lord has revealed it yes. through forefathers of faith like Dr. Ruckman. Right. Yes. And we get to reap the benefits. Amen. You know, why aren't you reaping the benefits? Right? Why are you always at the same place? You're like that baby, you know, you're not even a baby anymore. You're 12 years old. You're still sitting on baby stool, waiting mom to force feed you in your mouth. Mm-hmm. Nothing wrong with you. You go to school. You do your homework. But when it comes to eating time, you find your baby chair from 12 years ago. You try to fit yourself in there, almost breaking it. You're just waiting, waiting for your mom to feed you those, you know, I don't know, Gerber's? Or yeah. you like those little liquid food? Mushy food. Or like a milk, yeah. you know, mommy's milk. And you never grew spiritually. Mm. That's how a lot of Christians look like today. Yeah. And I'm not even talking about this, you know, crowd, liberal Christian crowd who doesn't believe in the perfect word of God who doesn't strip which witness or doesn't do any of that. Yeah. Bad music, bad dress code, everything, worldly. I'm talking about Bible-believing circles. Yeah. Amen. Bible-believing Christians should be better. Amen. You and I should be better. Yes. Yes. If we can, you know, from bottom of our, you know, heart that we could say, I can't go to hell, then your rest of your life to sh- should show it as well. Yeah. People can listen to you. People will not listen to you, even if you tell them, I can't go to hell. But seeing every part of your other life, they'll be like, you know, I can't trust you. You could tell me I can't go to hell all you want. But you're a fornicator. You're an adulterer. You're a liar. You're a thief. You're lazy. Man, if you're going to be there, I don't want to be there. You know, I hear that sometimes. And when we witness to people, this person said they're Christians, but if they're going to be there, I'm not going to be there because they're the worst person that I know. Don't ever 
think that just because you're saved, you can't sin anymore. There are certain, you know, calls out there says, you know, obviously you, your, your soul can't sin anymore through the spiritual circumcision, right. Colossians 2.11. Yeah. But you and I still have flesh. Yes. So you will still commit sin. Yes. And because your flesh will continue to commit sin, it's up to you. Yeah. Are you going to be that testimony, good testimony, or bad testimony? Good. Because of you, I did not want to go to heaven. Wow. Think about it at the white throne judgment. If someone points out you, point at you, and telling the Lord, it's because of him, it's because of her. And you can't avoid their face. No. You know, tears are coming down from their face out of sadness and also out of the anger. They'll be pointing at you. You, you caused me to burn in hell forever. Wow. You and you, you told me you can't go to hell. You know, but I can't, I, I hated you because you were the worst Christian that I've ever seen. Come on. Uh, that's, that's, unfortunately, reality is that majority of the Christian will be like that. Yes. Based on the 27 years of ministry that I've been in, that's going to be the case. That's why you see, you know, strong ones, people who truly want to serve the Lord, they're still here. Very few. For majority of you, you won't be here if Lord tarries 25 years from now. You're like, oh, you're such a pessimist. No, I'm just telling you by the statistical, you know, things that we've seen then how can you make sure that you will get, take things seriously and serve the Lord? You yourself have to get right with the Lord. That's Amen. number one. Again, I can't hold you and tell you to come up here, please. Get on the altar. Let's get right with the Lord. Why don't we pray together, right? We're like, okay, now I feel good. You know, pastor, pray for me and pray with me. No, that's just an act. Right. Even little children over there can see you through it. Yeah. Mommy's a liar. Daddy's a liar. Coming home, they fight. They curse at each other. You know, they drink. They watch stupid stuff on TV, dirty stuff. Man, I never seen them ever open a Bible in their life. They never asked me to pray together. Even the meals, you know, it's like the, wow. You know. Yeah. I mean, children tell the truth, unfortunately, yeah. all the time, most of the time, you know. But that's how God's going to sometimes have to wake you up yes. as an adult, yeah. right? Yeah. And as children, you have to wake up. What's the most important thing in your life? Since if you trust that Christ, you and I can't go to hell, man, the Lord should be the most important thing in our life. Heaven should be on our mind all the time. Judgment said of Christ should be on our mind all the time. Hell should always be on our mind. Seeing those lost souls out there, you know what? I want every single person to get saved. Mm -hmm. I don't care if they're Biden. I don't care if they're Trump. You know, I want every single soul to get saved, yeah, yeah. right? Even Kim Jong-un's of the world, they need to get saved, yes. right? But where's your heart at? Are you still thinking about, Oh, yeah, how am I going to pleasure, find pleasure in my life after this day, after this service? How am I going to get away things, running away from God? You know, it's like, I don't want to hear this preaching anymore. So sayonara for about a month or two, and maybe preach or preach something against other than sin and hell and those stuff, right? You know, it's up to you, right? Quality is always more important to the Lord than quantity, yes. right? The Lord's always looking for the few, right? You know, Lord never says, I'm going to have a millions and millions of army, you know, throughout the history of the Word of God. There are always few, right? Yes. And you are that few. Yes. I am that few. Yes. Thank God for that. Amen. Thank God for the opportunity. Thank God that he has given us this privilege and blessing to serve him in his army. Thank God for the perfect word of God. Thank God for the local church. Amen. Again, you and I should be shamed 
ashamed and shameful to all the brethren who doesn't have a local church to go to. Yes. But we neglect the ministry. We neglect the people. We don't do like what we ought to do. We take it like just like, a, you know, Caribbean, what is it, cruise trip. Just do it once in a while. Just, you know, have fun and then off season. How in the world can Christians have off season? I don't get it. Yeah. In season, I'll be at church all the time. Off season, there are some people out there who's, you know, diehard sports fan. Sundays is their off season at church. Preacher, I'll find you during the off season when NFL's off season. That's my in season for the church. But off season, don't bother me from August all the way to February, right? Wow. You know, that's the football season. Don't ever even touch me or call me or do anything, right? Try being in contact with me. Super Bowl weekend, right? You know, that's the mindset. And I'm not talking about unsaved people here. I'm talking about saved Christians. Yeah. How in with this? Christians can be filled with the devils. Yes. Yeah. Sure. You could be devil filled Christian. Uh-huh. Yes. You're not leading souls to the Lord. You're actually leading path wide open. For unsaved people to go to hell. If your true testimony is that I can't go to hell, you have to show it in your life. Yes. If you truly love the Lord, no more words. Words are cheap. Yes. We've heard so many people, phone calls, emails, everything. Oh, I love the truth. I love King James Bible. I love, you know, dispensation. I love, you know, those. Where are you? Are you doing anything about it? Mm. Words are cheap. Don't be just worse Christian, right? Be doers. Yes. Do something. Let's pray. Dear Father, we live in this Laodicean age. And the majority, if not almost all, are just lukewarm, Lord, including myself. I find myself day after day with the things of the world and devil's attack and the fleshly desires always trying to take over. But you, Lord God, I can find strength in you, Lord. Yes. I can be better Christian just through the word of God, praying, trusting, just simple things, Lord God. I pray that every single person will take it seriously. Since we can't go to hell because we trusted you, help us not to just stay where we are, but grow and mature and be an exemplary Christian for you, denying us, denying our flesh. Don't ever give credit to ourselves with humility, without pride, giving all the glory to you in every part of our life, at church, at home, at work, at school, wherever we may be. Lord God, I pray that you bless the rest of the services today. And above all, Lord, even so come Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.